Once your blood runs orange and blue, orange and blue. 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 this, this is, the pod, is the pod for you. For you. You're listening to Orange and Blue Bloods, hosted by EJ Stewart and Tommy Beer. Let's get to it. Dude. Okay, so there will be several key storylines to pierce through this offseason for the Knicks. And to touch on a wide range of topics, I figured we could play a new game, a game we've not played on Orange and Blue Bloods. We will play a game of fact and fictions, fact or fiction. So here's how it will work. I'll make a statement about the Knicks offseason and 2024 season. I'll ask Tommy if the statement is fact or fiction. So let's begin with the draft, which is actually just a couple of weeks away. Knicks currently don't have any picks in this draft. So, Tommy, the Knicks will acquire a first-round pick in this month's draft. Fact or fiction? I'm going to go with fiction. Um, I think one of the reasons the Knicks were comfortable trading away their first round pick in the Josh Hart deal was because their their rotation is stacked. You know, we know Tibbs doesn't like to go 11, 12 deep. Um, no. You know, it was, it was a it was a story when it when it when it went down to nine. I just don't see a, an avenue for playing time for a player that they would draft um, if he's a stash and you know guy they can stash overseas for a couple seasons. But I think I could see him moving into the early second round this way. There's, you know, less money guaranteed, more options in terms of um, stashing him overseas or you know one of those type of scenarios. Um, so I think they'll be open to the opportunity. I think they'll have a couple guys, and if hey if this guy would really like, and he if he falls past 22, then we'll you know we'll, I'm sure they have relationships with a number of teams and say. What are you thinking about? Yada, yada, yada. So I, I certainly won't rule it out. Um, but I, I would say that, um, you know, again, and the Knicks, you know, keep in mind, they have seven first round picks over the next 10 seasons. So they they have plenty of, you know, they'll, they will have plenty of rookies uh, coming into the, you know, bringing an infusion of talent as early as next season when they could have three first round picks. Um, so, th- th- so for all those reasons, I, I think it's more likely uh, that they remain, you know, keep the kind of sit on their assets, sit on their hands and, and sit this one out. Yeah, I'm going to go with fiction as well. I think teams are less inclined to sell first-round picks as opposed to just drafting a European player or an international player they could stash overseas. We see the Spurs do that. Obviously, they kind of were the first team that kind of started doing that. And now we're seeing almost all NBA teams uh, it, it do that. Can you buy yourself in the first round still? Yes, that, do, that still does happen. But I, I think it will be a lot harder to do that. The Knicks have the assets to get back into the first round. They do have a lot of those, those protected first they got from all these various different trades, a lot of them, you know, from last year's draft. But I don't think they want to touch those for a draft pick. I think they want to include those in a trade for a veteran or potentially a star. So I'm, I'm going to agree. I think that they do come away with this from this draft with a player, probably someone in the second round, but it won't be someone that they draft in the first round. So I'll agree. I'll go fiction there as well. OK, Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Toppin are set or eligible to sign. Uh, their rookie extensions this offseason. So statement here is Emmanuel Quickly and Obi Toppin will sign extensions this offseason with the Knicks. Fact or fiction? So you're asking IQ and Obi Toppin? Yes, including both of them in this. For for that, I will say fiction. I believe that Emmanuel Quickly gets an extension. Knicks lock him up long term. Um, I think they allow Obi um, one more season. Um, you know, then he's then he's still a restricted free agent after this upcoming season. Um, assuming that they don't trade Randall, which I still think is a possibility, so I, I certainly won't rule it out. Um, but as of today, um, I think just IQ gets his extension, and Obi does not. Yeah, I think it, I agree. I think it all hedges on if Randall gets traded this offseason. If he does, then I think Obi will get will get resigned. If he does not, then they won't sign Obi to an extension. I don't – I mean, I hate to say it because I, I, it means that I'm admitting something I don't want to happen, but I don't think Randall gets traded. So because of that, I think that this is a fictional statement. I, I think that Emmanuel quickly gets – probably gets signed, but I don't know if it's the formality that, like, uh, maybe some – and I'm not saying you think it's a formality, but maybe the assumption that, that Knicks will find a way to get that done. Like I told you uh, before when we talked about this a couple of a weeks ago, maybe a month ago, like – Man quickly can you know look at some of these deals that some of these guards have gotten, or maybe he can look at just the depth chart and see that you know as long as he's here, he's always going to be behind uh, Jalen Brunson and say, "Hey, I know next season somebody's going to need a starting point guard. Like, why not test the test the market and see if I can get a starting job somewhere and make the Knicks have to fork over a hundred million dollars maybe for a backup." you know, point guard or backup six man, whatever you consider a man quickly. Like, you know, maybe he'll want to force his hand in that regard and then bet on himself. I, I think that's 
probably less likely than him just signing a, a more team friendly deal, but I don't think it's off the table. So uh, I'm not sure if either guy signs. It's definitely way more likely quickly does, but I agree. I think Toppin uh, won't won't sign as long as uh, Randall's here. So I'm going to say fiction on that. Also for Toppin, it wouldn't make sense for him to sign while Randall's here because the Knicks can just point to him saying, hey, you average eight points a game. So here's, you know, $50 million, you know, the deal that Brunson rejected by, by the uh, Maverick. They'll probably offer him something like that. And he'll say, what the hell? I know I'm better than that. Like, let me play this thing out. And, you know, if you don't want me, I can just go to Richard free agency and, and see if someone else will, will pay me as a starter. Or maybe I outplay that number for whatever reason. Maybe Randall gets hurt. Maybe I got to start a bunch of games. Either way, like he doesn't want to sign an extension given the body of work he's put together as an NBA player so far. We know his potential, his talent, but he hasn't had the opportunity to show it. Yeah, um, as far as IQ goes, um, think about the teams that that need for point guards that are in the market for point guards right now. You know, now, yeah, um, the Lakers uh, are the Suns going to be in the market for point guard. The Clippers, you know, these are high te- teams that are willing to shell out big money. Um, that are that are the, you know, so those are those are situ- scenarios that that uh, IQ is going to keep an eye on, to say the least. Okay, the Knicks replacement for Scott Perry, a general manager, will come in house. Fact or fiction? Yeah, I think that's a fact. I think uh, Gerson Rosas is the guy that uh, um, Leon eventually tabs to uh, kind of inherit the GM spot. I think, um, you know, two guys align vision. You know, Leon is obviously going to hire his own guy. Um, he's brought him. He, there's there's comfort. Uh, there's a comfort level. There's a familiarity there. So I think Rosas gets named sooner rather than later, actually. Yeah, I'm going to go fact as well. But the Knicks are a weird team. Like, I don't know if this is going to happen very soon. Like, I, I I think there's a chance we go into the season without a general manager, which really won't be that big a deal, I think, as long as someone's doing the day-to-day duties of general manager. But right. we, we know the Knicks front office operates at the beat of their own drum. We know the ownership operates at the beat of their own drum. And it wouldn't surprise me if they decided that they could just lose it to the general manager and decide, oh, we'll just, you know, figure it out and just do the job ourselves and make up for what Scott Perry lost. Um, but yes, I do think eventually when that happens, maybe it's not in the next month, maybe it's not even again before the season starts. I do think eventually uh, Gerson Rosas or uh, Perrin, either one of those guys ends up becoming the general manager. Um, I could see a scenario where they they, they want Perrin that role as well, but I'm going to say that they go with Rosas uh, and he will eventually be named general manager. I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon. Okay, here's an interesting one that I don't think a lot of people have really thought about. But uh, Tom Thibodeau's contract expires at the end of the 2025 season, meaning he has just two years left on his current deal. So, Tommy, Tom Thibodeau will sign a contract extension this offseason with the Knicks. Fact or fiction? Yeah, I'm going to say fiction. I think that the Knicks will let this year play out. Um, You know, Thibodeau doesn't have to worry about being a lame duck. He's those two years um, has another year after this year. So it's not like questions are going to be constantly coming at him. Um, and the thing I've always, you know, like to keep in mind when it comes to Leon Rose and, and Tibbs, even when Tibbs was on the hot seat last summer, early this season, is Leon Rose knows that once he, somebody has to get thrown overboard, the first guy you throw overboard is the head coach. That'll buy Leon Rose probably a little more time, right. um, uh, you know, to, to kind of figure things out or let things play out, et cetera. Um, so I, I, if you sign Tibbs to a long contract extension, it's tougher sell to the owner that you're firing or head coach. You're going to have to pay him for four more years as opposed to just one more year. Um, so I think that flexibility works in uh, um, Leon Rose's favor. So I think that's why they'll put off the extension talks as long as possible. Whew, I hope you're right. Um, I'm going to say fact, which scares the hell out of me. But uh, I think I think what we saw in the first year of Tibbs, like they, they remember he had a they had a five year deal but the fifth year was a team option. After the first season, when the Knicks had a really good year, they made the playoffs at 14 in the East, 41, 31, I believe was their record. Um, they picked up Tibbs's option kind of quietly. For the fifth year, on, 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 and this is after his first year in New York, and you know, I remember kind of picking, you know, pulling my hair out, being like, "What? Why are you making moves five years down the line after just one season?" I, I feel like this Knicks organization and this front office likes to champion their wins, likes to champion the the things they're proud of. So, like, you know, I mean, giving RJ Barrett that extension while you're in the midst of the Donovan Mitchell uh, negotiations, I think was part of that. Um, I think giving Tibbs that pick up his fifth year option and he after year one, which seems insane to me, I think is part of that. 
And, uh, I, I think that, you know, there's a chance that maybe they'll look at this offseason and say, hey, do we want to have a situation where we go into next year and we have a question about, you know, if the team does really well now, how, how much longer are we extending Tibbs? How much money are we giving him? I think if you spend them now to like a, something, maybe a, maybe add two more years onto the current deal he has, uh, it's probably better than the Knicks maybe winning, you know, 53 games next year. And you come into the offseason, all right, well, you know, Tibbs is going to need a new four or five year contract, which I, I don't I don't think even they would want to do. So and the Knicks have always been smart with the try to be, be frugal when they can with some of these deals as opposed to giving out the max. So I actually think there's a small chance or a decent chance that they actually do extend him to something. Maybe again, maybe adding two years to the deal with the same amount of money, maybe a slight raise. And maybe they extend him through 2027. That would make me go crazy. And we'll probably be yelling about it on Orange and Blue Bloods if and when that happens. But uh, considering the Knicks like to champion again their wins and that this was a very, very successful season for this organization, I can see them wanting to uh, give Tibbs that, uh, that, uh, that little like carrot. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say fact. What's crazy is that Tibbs is by far the longest tenured coach in the Atlantic Division. Uh, uh, all the other four teams, coaches have been, uh, you know, Joe Mazzulla is the second longest tenured. And he's been on the job, what, 10 months, 11 months? So, yeah. Uh, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy considering the Knicks have, for a lot of yes. the last 20 years, been in the basement of that division. And a lot of those organizations in this division are, divi- are organizations that we, we were told were first class organizations, organizations yep. that, you know, Knicks won the model themselves after. Well, again, none of these guys have a coach that's lasted more than a year. So it, it does speak to maybe uh, maybe things not being as rosy in other places as other people may think. Okay, a uh, couple more here. Knicks finished this past postseason starting Brunson, Grimes, Barrett, Randall, and Mitch in the starting lineup. Fact or fiction, that will be the same starting lineup on opening night. I'm going to go with fiction. I think that mm. there's – I think a, a deal gets done at some point. I think – that Rose pulls the trigger. I, I think something to keep in mind and, and something we've kind of mentioned and hinted at and something we'll talk about over the next couple of months. They have Jalen Brunson on arguably the best value contract in the NBA right now outside of rookie contracts, like non-max contracts. Yeah. Um, Jalen Brunson being outside of the top 50 highest paid players in the NBA is an absolute steal. And then his contract dips even further the next season. Um and I think that this two-year window, um, it's sort of like when, uh, to use an analogy, when you draft a quarterback in the first round and you have those five years player controlled. Right, yeah. You know, like we saw the Seahawks do with Russell Wilson. When you can spend like crazy because you're only paying your quarterback, you know, it, you, Bengals are doing this a little bit with yeah, Burrow. The Eagles had done it with Jalen Hurts and so just having to pay him this past offseason. Exactly. When you have a key player making so far below market value, that you, you know you have this little window to, to really push the envelope, and I think the Knicks will take advantage of that scenario. Um, and so I'm not sure if it's Randall that gets dealt, or maybe Mitchell Robinson even, or, or you know maybe R.J. Barrett you know get, gets involved in a deal. Um, but I think with as much kind of so much up in the air and so many good great players kind of floating around the ether, you know, well, I think the Knicks and, and Leon Rose um, pulls the trigger on a big superstar deal. Oh, this is a tough one. I, I'm making the questions. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I swear, to people, I'm not patting myself on the back. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna say fact. I, I, I think, I think there's a, I think there, I think that a lot of these guys will names will be floated around this off season. Something tells me that a trade that's gonna change the starting line is gonna happen at the deadline, and not maybe in the off season. Um, there are just a, too many imperfect guys out there that are available whether it be a Zach Levine, whether it be a Carl Empty Towns, like all these guys, whoever, whichever guy you want to name, there's always something about them that kind of makes you think, oh, the Knicks really want to sign on to that. And, you know, in the case of Levine, for example, maybe he's a guy that you want, you know, want to wait another half years to get further out away from that contract as opposed to having, you know, four full years, however many more years he has left on that deal. I, I think they come back with a starting lineup, uh, but maybe something happens midseason. That changes things. So I'm going to say uh, fact on this one. But I think this is probably the one I think that could actually go like 50-50. I think this could go either way. Yeah, I think Vegas would probably have it probably 65-35 that, that it stays the same, that there are no yeah. major changes. But I just – I think something something pops loose that, that the Knicks jump on. And last one on this, Jalen Brunson makes his first all-star game next season. Fact or fiction? 
Yeah, I think that's a fact. You know, he deserved to make it this year. Um, sometimes that's kind of a, a year behind in terms of reputation. And now he has that that full body of work um, on tape. And obviously his postseason performance, which actually is even better than his regular season performance, incredibly mm-hmm. enough. Um, so I think it's, you know, it's not, not obviously not a lifetime achievement award, but just kind of, you know, we didn't get you in last time. So if it's, you know, if we're deciding between two guys, let's err on the side of, of Jalen Brunson. Yeah, I agree. I think this is a fact here. Um, I think we've seen this Knicks, with Knicks players in the past. Uh, Tyson Chandler winning defensive player of the year, not making the All-Star game. Next year, he makes it. Uh, David Lee has a really great season, doesn't make the All-Star game. Next year, he makes it in his last year in New York. Like, I think that we've seen this a lot, where a guy, you know, perhaps is underrated and then kind of go through the rest of the season. You realize, wow, this guy had a great year. Like, how did this guy not make an All-Star game? And the next year, uh, the voters and people were paying attention. Uh, they, they kind of maybe give a little more credit to the numbers they're putting up. Uh, and not kind of just poo-pooing it, saying, oh, it's the Knicks, who cares? I, I think that um, Brunson makes it next year. I think him and um, Murray probably both become the, you know, they kind of leave that mantle as the two best players, you know, not to make an all-star game. I, I think but Brunson uh, definitely makes it. and Because I, I think the Knicks also will have another good season next year. I think the Knicks will be probably right back in the top five of the Eastern Conference, five or six. And if you're in that conversation, you'll get an all-star. I actually wonder if Julius Randle makes an all-star game next year. Like, I wonder – if given what he did in the postseason again, will that make people again maybe be more inclined to not credit the regular season uh, production that he does, um, or will he still get that? I think mean, that would actually be more interesting. But I think that Brunson does make the All Star game. But that'll do it for this edition of Fact or Fiction. I thought that was fun. I hope Tommy had fun as well. I like it. I like uh, it. Yeah, mixing it up a little bit. We got to mix up a bunch of different things uh, during the summer, so we'll have plenty of other fun uh, subjects and fun topics. But we got another segment. That is not new that we've done in the past. And like I said earlier in the show, last week, some Knicks fans probably were annoyed. They had to relive one of Reggie Miller's greatest moments, the infamous choke sign in game five of the Eastern Conference against the Knicks. So I decided to make it up to you guys with a more pleasant memory. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. If you want to see more of our videos, be sure to check out our playlist and let us know what you think in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow us on social media to stay up to date on our latest podcast ventures. Um, Links will be in the descriptions. And as always, thanks for watching, and we will see you in our next video.